Hi, everyone. Today we have a very special guest. We have PStax. He's a fundamental investor and he's uh, on Twitter. Uh, how are you today, PStax? How are you? I'm amazing. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Sure. I'm glad you got you got to come on. Uh, so <laughs> tell us about your uh, background and how you came into crypto. Ah, uh, okay. Well, it might go on a bit long. So if, um, hurry me up if you feel like it. But yeah, so basically, um, I didn't really have much perception of what crypto was until probably 2019. So I knew what Bitcoin was. I was using Bitcoin for various things that um, I'm probably not going to go into on the video, but I was aware of Bitcoin, not so much Ethereum, had no idea of altcoins at all. Um, generally, background, I, I grew up poor Irish family, you know, living in the estates in London, uh, up to no good as a kid, did quite well at school, didn't really come out and want, want to go to uni or anything like that, didn't really know anything about what I wanted to do. And um Somehow I landed up um, getting in a bit of trouble and it changed my direction. I realised it wasn't so much that I was bothered about the trouble. It was more about I saw a, a smoother way of getting to where I wanted to get to. I realised I've got half a brain in my head and probably I should use it for something that was more constructive. So I mucked about an IT for a bit. I'm not overly technical. Um, I'm more of a, I'm good at sales. I'm, I'm good at leading teams i'm good at that sort of stuff so i started um looking at project management soon realized it was like a common sense sort of endeavor got into that did it for a bit didn't like working for people um was going to go contracting didn't fancy that either so I've, I've got a friend who's he's quite good um if you keep him in the back room you don't let him loose on clients he's very good technically but not so much on the uh in the areas i was quite good so we decided to spin something up, put a company together. He didn't have a lot of money around him. I had a bit more from uh, my nefarious past. And um, so basically I started it off. I kicked it up um, with a majority share. Been doing that for oh, quite a while now, probably about eight years or something. And um, it's going well. I've got like, hence the cover up. I've got quite a few blue chip clients in real life. And uh, crypto at the moment is still that borderline thing where, some people, as soon as you mention it, it turns them off, especially legit money. So we're getting there, but it's a slow sort of journey. So been doing that for a while. It was going well. Had some Bitcoins at the last sort of bull run. Carried on, kept them all the way up. Sold a few, but kept them all the way back down again. Um, probably 2019, I started hearing things about mainly Chainlink, to be fair. And um, when it was explained to me, obviously I'm in, I'm in the tech world and I started hearing about it through my legitimate clients and uh, like oracles and stuff like that. And I, I knew nothing about it. And um, it sort of interested me. I thought, let me have a, a bit of a deeper look. And the market was flat at that point. So I didn't really get into it. I still had the Bitcoins put away, locked on my um, hardware wallet. And uh, I just forgot about them in general. And then COVID came. And about Christmas, I started feeling the wobble of COVID, like financially, clients were pulling out of things, they didn't want to invest as much. And I just had this feeling everything was going to dump. And I took a punt right at the peak point. I mean, I'm never good for catching the exact bottom. It don't normally bother me. But somehow, towards the end of March, it was crashing. And I just took a jump and pulled a load of money out of my company stuck it into a few things that led to a few more things and around that golden sort of period i i accrued a lot more bitcoin mainly bitcoin was a focus chain link to a bit of ethereum but still no sort of major idea about alts and what they did and then um one of my friends got pulled into that uh tika guy the one who picks the five coins that are going to cost you uh, 50 cents and you're going to turn them into 700 billion pound in a year's time and yeah, he put a load of money into it. And I started looking at what he what he bought and I thought, oh, I don't really like it, to be fair. I can't really see much future in quite a few of the things he's got. And it got me sort of looking at other things on the market, altcoins. And um, I got into VeChain, Zilliqa, those sort of things. It was, it was, I was delving into like the ones that were sort of known, but not really that known. They weren't like a micro cap gem, they were about, but bought a bit of ADA, sadly. Um, yeah, for my sins. And uh I rode, I rode that for a little while, probably by about springtime, maybe May, coming into May, market was picking up a bit. I started seeing bubbles. I bought a load of Acro um, just in April and it, it just started flying. And I thought, 
I can do this. I know what I'm looking for, but where do I where do I find it? Sort of thing. So I started um delving a bit more and stacking stuff up, but I was more of a, a hodler. I was never like a day trader. I never really went with the charts or anything like that. It weren't really my thing. I'm more of a I feel it in my chest. I know what I'm looking for from a tech perspective, and I know what connections can do in like an IT world. And I was just buying stuff that had those sort of connotations. I was just going through a bit of a grab everything and then see what you like and what you don't. And then uh, DeFi come around in the in the summer, and uh, my degenerate gambler streak sort of kicked in. And um, yeah, I got rugged multiple times. I probably lost about seventy five grand over the course of that summer, and. Uh, I made some money. I mean, I was early in core and things like that. And um, YFB, tar, those sort of ones. I caught them at the ground. So I was making some good change off of the, the DeFi buzz. And uh, I got into something that um, through, my, through my very esteemed colleague and friend, Pablo Hippo. So he put me onto Bree and it was going good. It was going really well. And then out of nowhere, Bree just tore it all down and um, that hit me. I've been rugged before, but it was more of a gamble and, the briefing hurt because it, it was so legit as a project you know it had been going for ages and then literally just to have that happen to me is just I, I i went into a bit of a bad mood for a month or so didn't do much and then i started get come back and i started getting into the low caps and really that's where i've been since i mean i've got a lot of solid fa coins i'm big on quant vxv those sort of things albt but yeah, the low caps sort of caught my eye and I realised how much money you could spin up. So, yeah, that, that's that's really the story of where I've got to where I am now. So um, when, you, when you're looking for low market cap coins, what, what are you looking for specifically? Again, it's, it's, I look for things that have got some real world crossover, like partnerships. I want it to, I want it to talk to real people. I, I don't want to have to do that onboarding process where, you're having to convince a normal person why they should buy into it. I will do that, but initially what I look for, I look for a low market cap, preferably, it was about 10. I'd go under 10 mil most of the time. Um, the lower the circulating supply, the better. Jump into the website, find the white paper, have a read, see what it did, what the tokenomics are, lockups and things like that. And uh, yeah, the other things I'd look for was like the team experience and from what I do in real life, I mean, I've got a massive um, amount of connections on LinkedIn. And I started looking at what these people had on LinkedIn. What have they done? How many connections have they got? I mean, if you're a legitimate person and you've been in business for 10, 15 years, I'm expecting to see a, a reasonable number of legitimate connections who also have good jobs and have a background. So I'm, I'm looking for things in like finance. I'm looking for investment from like the, the technology spheres. And I, lo I love AI as well so show me some artificial intelligence and i'm sold i mean you'll have to talk me out of buying it i need to find a reason not to pay out for it because i just love it so yeah there's there's a lot of that and, I, and then typically i'll go coin gecko i'll pull up like some of the wallets i'll have a look through the top holders are um start looking at the exchanges what the is there any volume sometimes volume don't bother me because i know you like the fuse it will blow but is there the potential is the pool big enough to take those sort of trades that i want to see to make good money out of it and um, but typically, I've always gone for those those sort of real world connections, as you know. Um, Smart MFG, perfect example. Um, not talked about much. Um, when I saw who they were linked in to, just yeah, straight away I was like, I'm not reading anymore. Just buy it. I'll go back and work out what the hell it does afterwards. And uh, I do a lot of that. I like things like RSR. Caught that really, really early, and um, it's a real slow burner. But I can see the the connects and who's funded it. So, yeah, I, I look at, like, is there a big VC behind it? And if they are, what's the lock? I'm I'm pretty much a gambler, if I'm honest, you know. Like, I, I need to see a bit of concrete, but I'll throw things. And the majority of the time, I go with my gut, and I've done all right out of it. It can't be it can't be that bad. Okay. Um, did you ever look into BitDAO? That's, like, another Peter Thiel project that's uh, kind of like RSR. <sighs> I, I, I didn't, and I'll tell you why. So... Uh, no, it's not him. It's the other guy. I was going to talk about the. Um, do you remember DMG? Do you remember that coin, the, um, Defi Money Market? Uh, I can't remember what the guy's called. He's a he's a major VC, and um, 
it really sold me. I stuck a load of money in and I just watched it go from like 15 racks down to like three, three racks over the course of about two months. So you do get bit even with the real world connections, but some VCs are better than the other. No, I've not looked at bit down and answered to your question. Yeah, so some of them like uh, start like just dumping grounds. You know, you get into something with a bunch of big VCs and they just the chart just tanks on you. So do you do you look for red flags? Like what what's like a big red flag that that you'd look into if you had a low market cap coin? Um, I like to see at least some level of. Uh, you can't always get a docs team, right? But if I can find some links to some people who may know something about who the team actually are. I feel a bit more comfortable. Um, I like to see some form of liquidity locks or at least a plan too. Um, if it's a project like what we're talking about with like real world ambitions, I'd want to see an audit and I'd want to read the audit report. Um, some auditors are better than the other, you know, we can go back to certain person I will not name on the call, but I watched them do a live audit last year or the year before on a, YouTube and the coin rubbed within about three days after the audit. So I, I look for an audit. I look for, uh, is there any sort of lock on the liquidity? What's the pool like? Has there been any sales? That's an important one because a lot of contracts these days, they let you buy in, but you can't get back out. So there is also that. Um, and I look for noise on Twitter. I look for for... It might not be a lot of noise, but I, I try and pull some bits out. So I do a scan of like social media. Can I find anything dirty on it? Is it enough? And what I basically do is I just weigh out the risk and the reward. As I said, I'm a bit of a gambler. So even if a couple of those things are in play, I still might buy a bag. But what I won't do is post it up on Twitter unless I'm confident that it's safe. Because I see people do that. And I know the coin just gets bumped because they've got a good following. And then the next thing you know, it's dead. And you've got all these people crying. And there's one thing I, I don't want to do ever in this space is rob people. That's not about it. I make enough money in the real world. I do all right in crypto. I've got no need to run away with anyone's money or shill something for cash. I just, I don't really get down with that at all. So yeah, and I'll tell you what else I look for. <laughs> Sorry. Certain people shilling it. So if I see certain names on Twitter who are going on about a coin, and sometimes you see the linkage and they're coordinating it, I'm definitely not buying and there's a few guys who I can't trade, like KSI. Every time KSI is buying, I'm selling, and vice versa. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of flags. But, I'm again, I'm a gambler. You have to weigh it up. Yeah, a lot of the influencers do the pre-sales, and then they're you know, up yes. 10x, and they're looking to take profits while they're showing it to you. So you have to you know, always uh, be cautious with everything. I don't do those, and I'll tell you why. I don't like vesting. I'm so impatient. I don't want to wait two years to get my money out of something, even if it means that I'm going to get six drops of it and I can dump them every time and I'm making it. It's boring for me. I don't want that. I want to get the dough out, move to another one, flip that into more. And vesting's put me off. I have done a few. I'm not going to lie. They've never really worked out too well for me, if I'm honest. I've always ended up holding something that's dead by the time I get it. And uh, yeah, I, just, I, don't, I don't like pre-sales. It's not really for me. Yeah, well, I'm in the U.S., so like I can't even invest in them. You got to like KYC and everything, so they won't even <laughs> let me, let me uh, invest in them. So it, you mentioned uh, technicals. You, you don't use technicals at all when you're looking at coins? I buy stuff that's so fresh. There is literally no point. You can't read a chart when it's like two, three weeks old. It's, it's just you get the normal thing. The, the, what you see is like I'll watch a launch and it'll go up. And then it'll crash even be like below where it launched at. And I'll probably buy them. I might catch the candle up, but I'll definitely sell a, a couple X just to get my money back and leave a bag in. But when it hits the bottom, if I like it, I'll buy when it crashes. But no, I don't, I don't really watch charts too much. I watch volume. Sometimes I see the volume growing and I know something smelly is coming or, you know, they're going to get a listing. And again, that leads you to check wallets. But no, nah, char charts not really for me. I leave that to the bigger brains in the business. So what, what are some of your successful calls that, that play it out? Ooh, all right. I, well, I bought Bitcoin at about seven and a half grand in March when uh, it all crashed in COVID. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy that I took the gamble. And that's I, I know no one would really read, would say that about Bitcoin. But um, yeah, it was dying and I was buying. And uh, I put a lot into that. If it went wrong, I'd have been rewound about five years in terms of where my money has got to. And um, so I'm quite proud that I had the balls to do that in terms of other stuff. So I'd, I'd definitely say VeChain. I bought VeChain so low. And I mean, this summer, 
it just hit a point where I was just sitting there and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. And funny story on that, I accidentally transferred an amount of E-Chain when I first bought back in 2020 and I sent it to the wrong place and I cannot get to it. And I went, ah, it's nothing. And now it would be worth probably a good five figures and I still can't get to it. And every day that itches me and drives me insane. But um, yeah, of course, E-Gold. Um, I grabbed that at about seven dollars, I think, and um, I just got, I just took a large amount out of eGold, not because I don't like the project, but it, it hit four hundred and forty dollars at that point. I mean, you got to sell some of it. You can't you can't hold it. You'll you'll crash it back down. So that was a good one. Um, a lot of people won't like me saying it, but like the the space coins, the Greek coins. Um, I mean, I, there's a lot of. Uh, history behind that well that's probably a whole different conversation about how i got into the greek coins but um yeah i i popped it i popped a couple of them the cheaper ones at like kappa gamma probably at about dca just a dollar ish and they went up to about 45 recently which was nice but um row and beta I was buying them around 40 they went well over a thousand so there's a lot of things. I mean, MFG, I, I think I stumbled on MFG from a similar source that you might have uh, stumbled onto it because um, I think we found out about it within about a, a, an hour or two of each other. And I know that from your um, from your lovely partner because she went to me, have you seen this? And I went, I have actually. I was looking at that earlier. So, you know, it, it was a great minds meeting there. But um, yeah, if, I think everything I'm really putting out is about, probably like a three to a six X and you've got the occasional ones that go right through the roof. I had a good one with uh, NFY. I'm not in that no more for a number of reasons, but I mean, caught that at six, got out of it at about 620 or something. So there, there's been a number of insane X amounts, but typically I'm more constant and I'll hit threes, fours, five, sixes, sevens, like OLT recently and uh, yeah, one ledger. So yeah, um, I'm, I've, I've had a good, I've had a good run, but I've had an awful run at the same time in certain areas. And, and you have a medium that you uh, post a lot of these, like you get about the analysis, uh, analysis, right? Uh, it's, it's interesting, right? So with the medium, I started just doing threads, and then two tweets turned into four tweets to six tweets, and I thought I've not got enough space. I need, I need like some actual space to write this stuff down because I'm I'm pulling a lot of data out and I, I can't get it on so I started doing the mediums but I think that was something inside of me that gen- genuinely likes writing I do like writing in any aspect you know so that will lead into what we'll talk about with the ostriches in a in a little while but um yeah so the medium become natural and I pushed it out from the space coins and it just went it went crazy and uh then I see Chico talking about me on on his YouTube channel, and I just think <laughs> this is mad. And uh, yeah, so the medium's been good. I've not put a, a new one on there for a while. I think the last one I put on might have been OLT or Munch. I can't remember one of the two, but yeah. Uh, so I, I do update that, but it's been less last sort of month or so when the memes are kicked in. So I notice a lot of uh, coins are like uh, they're correlated, right? So like right now we're we're in like this metaverse uh, mm. type of movement. Do you, what do you think is like the next next trend that we're gonna see? Mm. See, uh, it, a new gaming was coming. Um, I always thought DAOs would have their day, and it's not really it's not really caught yet. And uh, I reckon it might. I mean, I love I love GDAO, I love Governor DAO, just for the fact of how they bailed us out of Bree and picked us up off the floor, but. Jeff's a clever guy and the stuff he's implementing is amazing. And when you look at the market cap of the thing, it's absolutely tiny. So anyone who's not looked at um, Governor Dow is, is still an amazing buy and it's still untalked about. But the fair launch policies that they've got for like projects going live and the way they lock and um, NFT launches, that sort of stuff. And uh, Dow's as a service, governance as a service. I, I really like what they're doing. So it might happen or it might not. And we might just go through this consistent cycle that we're seeing where TA takes a, a short spurt and then it retreats and the memes kick in. And if it continues to have that pattern, it will be, a for me, three, four X flips and and waiting for the next sort of spurt through because I don't really touch the meme stuff. I can't stand Binance chain and all, I, I just don't go near any of that. I mean, at a push, if someone gives me something crazy, I might brave bridging over but yeah I, I don't like all the centralized stuff and uh 
sees Ed's a controversial character in that aspect. Where do you see crypto headed for the long term? Oh, to a, to a bad place, if I'm honest. And that's not for investors, but it's for, for people in general. Um, see, I, I, I put this look into the internet, which is to obviously trap you in. It's got your data. Now it censors you if you say something that people don't like. It was the route to freedom when we got it. And I smell the same thing with block chain um you know so i can see where this is going we're, we're i was talking to someone the other day um and the way i sort of equated it was it doesn't matter that we're decentralized it doesn't matter that we're free and we can spin up all this money we're in a prison with no guards but the guards are at the gates and to get out of that prison you've got to get past them guards and that's the problem with with blockchain this you can be anonymous for so long but when you start spending it whether it's on a crypto card or you try and draw it out, it's going either into your bank or your PayPal, or you're losing a ton of money doing OTC. And what are you doing OTC for? You're taking cash that they're printing by the trillion. So I feel like we're being put onto that chain and it won't just be crypto that that chain will track eventually. And I see a sort of dark place where we're going to end up and nothing good comes from surveillance. As I live in London. We've got the most heaviest concentration of CCTV in the world. And it slipped in without anyone noticing. And you, you can't do anything without knowing there's a camera watching you. Soon it's going to be an AI bot watching everything you buy, everything you spend. I don't like that. It's a control sort of sphere. So my view on it is it's a great route to cash now. And while the doors are sort of semi-open, make as much as you can, take that money and keep it because you might need it in a few years' time the way the world's going. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um... So you you're, you're working on a project. Uh, can you tell us tell us about your project? Yeah, I can. Um, it's weird how this come about. So again, probably about nine months ago, me Scrooge, that's from broke to bags on Twitter. Uh, Pablo, we always banter each other on Twitter, and it's always that American meets Englishman <laughs> sort of joke that goes on. And uh, we were talking about cars, and I think Pablo was taking the mickey out of european cars saying uh, they're trash they're cheap they fall apart and said to him you need to get yourself an ostrich mate and the joke just stuck it wasn't a particularly funny one but it just stuck and the ostrich carried on to the point people were going to me are you going to do a coin do a mean coin and i don't i don't really want to do a mean coin that's not really for me i can't see any benefit in it so i was watching um uh unfed erstl as it kicked off and uh i noticed all these people getting these great profile pictures that were like they were noir art they were like very much like the sin city style the black and white very close cut brilliant and um i realized who was doing it and i, I sort of remembered the name forgot about him saw him pop up a little while ago with a nft project of about so i'll give him a shout out penguin fight club so i saw what he was doing and i went yeah, I like that. It sounds fun. You know, it's got a bit of a concept to it. And he was talking to me about what their plans were and where they were going to take it. And I thought, all right, I've never been one to sort of just do some art, take a load of money off of people. And that's it. You know, like, what's the point of that? I mean, I, I, that's not, that goes against my morals and my aesthetics. I don't, I don't like that. So I was talking to him and it just sort of died to death. And I think he'd noticed this constant ostrich joke that was going on with Pablo and Scrooge. And uh, I think he had some time for it. And he went, if you want, we can do the ostriches. And I went, you're joking, right? And he went, yeah. And I went, oh, God, I've never really thought about doing it seriously. I mean, I'm capable because I do stuff like this in real life. So do I want to do it? And I was like, I don't know. And I went, go on then, let's do it. So he's, um, he's left and uh, come back to me a few days later and said, I'm freed up. I can start doing the art. I bring my guy, Alio, in and uh, we start drawing. And I went, all right, fine. So I figured this would take him about, four months, five months. They've knocked it out in like a month. Come back to me and gone, I've got prototypes, it's ready. What do you want to do? And I'm like, wow, this is serious now. So at that point, we had to think of a name. And um, basically where we got to with that was I sat there and went, what can I call? And I thought, you know, La Cosa Nostra, Mafia, hmm, gangsters, sounds fun. Let's do something on that. And then the ostriches. And I thought, I'll just throw it in. It'd be crazy. It'd be like someone's took a bad trick, but let's do it. Let's see what it comes out like. And from that come the Cosa Ostra, O-Town. So the place is O-Town. 
the art is amazing. I mean, Noir and Alio are just geniuses. They're they're brilliant. And uh, I've got a really good dev um, who Noir introduced me to, and we started talking about what we could do. He said he could turn it around really quick. So from there, it was just, you know, get a community manager, spin up a Discord, get a Twitter, get the art done, push the NFTs out. So we launched about mm, probably about two, three weeks ago, had a good launch day, and then the market went like that. And uh, the mint slowed down a little bit, not panicking. My philosophy on things is if you build it, they'll come, right? So product over everything. Build a product that everyone wants, what they want to use, you're not going to worry about it. Am I in a rush to clear the mint? No, because I'm not trying to grab the money and run. So the people who've bought, they're people who know me. They know that I'm not a fly by night. They know that I'm a bit mad in the head with my ideas, what I come up with. And um, yeah, I, I just thought I'd, I'm going to do more for this. So let me let me get the art done. We'll bring the money in. And when the money comes in, I'll, I'll go to a VC. I know a few VCs and I, I can keep them straight and narrow not like the ones who I can't control because it's not the vibe I want to get. But if I want to do what I'm thinking of doing, I'm going to need a raise at some point or I'm going to need to hit the jackpot on, on a on a 100x coin, <laughs> one or the other. But I think I've got the right people that if we do it, it will remain organic and it won't just be a money in, profit out sort of enterprise. I wouldn't let it get like that. I'd rather just dump it all and walk away and give the people their money back. So... From that, I was thinking, what can I do with these things? And then, obviously, ostriches, they run like hell. I thought, yeah, all right. Mafia, gambling, that's how it all started. I'll do a race game. And then I started seeing other race games, and I thought, I've got to do something a little bit different here. If I'm going to make it stand out and make people want to buy it, what am I going to do? And I thought, right, I'm just going to throw that stacked madness into it. I'm going to put some features in it that no one else has got, and... I'm going to do some stuff that turns the wheel from being a fair game to an unfair game. Because the game don't matter if it's fair or not. That's what a lot of people forget. Games are not importantly have to be fair. You can cheat in Monopoly and still not win, but the game is fun. But if you know how to cheat, you might win the game in Monopoly, but there's four people playing. What if they catch you? Effectively, (laughs) they're going to take their money back. So I started thinking around that sort of aspect. uh, Could I make cheating fair? Could I use some form of AI? in the smart contract to make cheating fair. What's the odds of you getting caught? I'll let you do it, but I might catch you. And if I catch you, I want something in return. So you're going to have to pay me now once I've caught you, and I want to see the money. And the Robin Hood that I am, I'm not keeping the money. I'm going to give it to the people who bought into the project. So you might be able to cheat when we do this racing game, but if you get caught, you're going to lose your NFT. And you can only get him back when you pay your bow, or you ain't having him. And we're burning. He won't come back out ever. So that bow money is going to be generated back into the team wallet. So we've got a concept with that. Um, the, gen- the degenerate approach to this is it's definitely an adult game under the surface, right? So there's drug references, there's violence, there's weapons. Nothing that GTA hasn't ran down the kids' throats already, but ideally it's an adult game. What we want to do is we want to put a front end on it so it's play to earn. And it's for everyone to go in and there'll be a way of playing that and it'll be a watered down version of the game that we've got in the background because the game in the background, I think the censorship will kill us. So the front one will be something that everyone can get into. We push it in certain places where Peter E is going to blow up and it is blowing up. It's going to be the big thing that's coming in gaming. So we will make that front end like that. We'll have the back end with the more degenerate approach to sort of wrap this into something more than just um, NFTs in a game we want to look at bringing some form of DeFi element into it on top of the gaming the NFTs we want to put some form of DeFi element i.e. vaults so we, we'd like some vaults that generate there'll be a reason for why they generate that will become clear, clearer um, and you'll be able to do that I've seen Dead Bears do it really well with the um, flow key so I've sort of pirated that idea and thought, let me throw it in. It gives good benefit to the holders. It's an incentive to buy and hold on to it, keeps the floor at a nice level. So we're going to have a couple of pools and the amount of NFTs are going to dictate what you can actually yield. And there'll be a general coin for the for the eco that will be, there'll be it, the supply will be in the billions. You know, it's going to be a meme that is not a meme and it will be used to generate 
the betting, um, you'll be able to gamble on this as well. So we're building like a, a betting shop and a, there'll be a character who takes the bets. It'd be pretty gruesome. So you'll be able to bet with this native currency on the races. Um, the native currency is also going to be used for um, some other stuff. So there's a, a lot of utility behind that in general, but it's going to be pushed out to people who've got one NFT. So if you own one, you can throw it in, you'll generate a load of currency. It will allow you to go and have a bet. If you've got a character you want to play in the game, there is an entry fee and it's pulled and the winner takes it and it's tiered and there's a little cut for the uh, treasury in order to push some other dev. But that's what the native coin will do. The other pool is going to be for people with free, um, aka who I've been calling the 555. And they're not getting alpha today. I'm not going to give them any alpha. They're going to have to wait for the medium that's come in probably next week about why that 555 is so crucial to what I'm doing with OTAN. But essentially, that vault will generate a governance token as well as the local currency. So what we're going to have is that 555 element, and it's not the first 555 who bought or the first 555 who in Discord. It's an element of the story that will become clear as I release more chapters of what I've been writing in the background. And effectively, they will yield that governance token and that governance token will eventually control OTAN in a lot of aspects. And we, it will be used to decide future royalty payments, spin outs on NFTs, different areas because we're moving into the metaverse as well. So you, there'll be a team that will be capable of delivering that work. It will be costed fairly always, will always be available to lead that work and make sure there's value for OTAN. I'm not going to fly as soon as the DAO is in place. But what we want to do is we want to give value to the people who are actually looking at this long term. I don't want people to just flip an NFT in a week and, and leave. I want I want people to see the vision and how we're going to make them money long term. The supply of the DAO token will be low. Um, and that will generate need. If you want to come in and have an idea for OTAN from a, I'm a company and, or a dev and I'd like to develop this bit, you're going to need those because you're going to need to be able to influence the DAO to be able to get your, your, your things built. On top of that, we're, we're looking at Mersh. So again, at my artists are great. They're, they're thinking about the cl like clothing and what people would want. And we if we do Mersh, we're going to do it differently than most people would do. So there's that element. Um, we've got a funky feature that we're planning on building called the crematorium. So this, in effect, will allow people who've bought the ostriches, they've got three, four, five, they've got some low-ranked ones, they don't want them. So effectively, what we're going to do is we're going to put an amount into the crematorium, and for windows that we select, we're going to open up, we're going to let people come and burn their birds, and you'll be paid in the floor price. So that will reduce the flow of how many there are, and you need an ostrich to play the game. So it's going to drive demand. That might change, but that would be a dull decision. So when we get big enough, there won't be enough ostriches for everyone to play. What if half the world wants to play? How do we do it? That's for the DAO to work out, though. That's not my, my problem. So there's a number of things built in. Um, there'll be an alpha group because I'm sick of putting stuff out on Twitter and people take a 2x, don't trust my judgment and just dump on me. And that's fine. I don't mind getting dumped on, but I feel sorry for people who've got a bit of They've got some cojones and they want to hold for a 10x and you just got people who move on straight away to the next cool coin. That's fine, but that's not what my people who are in OTAN are actually about. They want longevity, they want product and they want something built. So I'm going to have an alpha group. It's not going to be a paid group. It's going to be if you've got the requisite NFT, you'll be allowed into the group and we're going to build something to check and balance and make sure there's no um, imposters or alpha stealers because I know what some of these big influencers are like. 40, 80, 150,000 come and grab calls off of people like me with little five grand followings and uh, push it out and take all the kudos. So we're going to stop that. We're going to keep it in house. And we're going to make everyone money off of it. And as I said, we've been making good money this year, like my people. And uh, yeah, we, and we're going to do that. And there's a load of other stuff. Um, some of the competitions we've got right now, I mean, we've got about 20 grand's worth of uh, NFTs and prizes up for grabs and there's going to be something that's going to have a lot more money behind it that's coming. And I, I'm not going to talk about that at the moment, but let's just say there's going to be a, a treasure hunt and it's going to be for the smart people. And it's going to be for the people who bought into my project and they will get something nice if they use their brains and concentrate on their history. That's a pivotal point. And the final bit that I sort of want to cover is today we entered, um, we've, we've got some land. We bought land in the uh, metaverse today. So we've gone with um, NFT worlds who are basically a Minecraft, owned product um they it's got direct connections into ps5 
Xbox, those sort of things. So the dream is that you'd be able to race your ostriches on your PS5 in your front room and make a bit of money. Who knows? That's a Q1 development for this um, this uh, NFT world's place. But they've got some great features. The developers can pipe straight in with Web3. All the stuff you need to build a game in there and basically put OTAN into life. So you'll have skins, wearables, those sort of things. That's all going to come. And we've bought that land. And we bought this morning... And within an hour, Pranksy swept up everything he could get his hands on. And uh, we ended up going, my word, if we'd have found this tomorrow, this would have cost us a hell of a lot more. So we've got a lot of space in uh, NFT worlds that we're going to be working on over the coming months. And uh, we're on another project as well, and we're going to be building a casino. But we might not be able to make ostriches work in that casino, so it might have to be a different creature. But yeah, that's a bit of alpha that's coming. I like the sounds of the project. Sounds uh, really fun to to like cheat and everything and uh, use That's the, the idea. You know, it, yeah. it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun. It's got to be fun. It's got to make some money, and it's got to um, it's got to constantly evolve. People don't want to sit still on a good idea. The ideas change. Crypto changes every month, two months. Different things come. We have got to keep up with the times, and that's why I want to give the doubt to people who are younger than me, brighter than me, and more with their finger on the pulse because. I'm getting to the point where I'm just going to be like, you know, I've made enough money out of this from comfy. And I just want to sit back and sort of watch what, what happens now. Like I want to, I want to see how my sort of ideas develop and uh, come to pass. And we're going to, we're going to take it everywhere. I mean, Hippo's got a great project called Wheelies that's coming out and it's got a, an amazing animated series behind it. And I want to do something. So again, I'm, I'm doing that cuckoo move of uh, jumping on someone's back, but again, I'll do it. A bit differently and uh underpinning that i'm, I'm writing uh the, on on the otan medium you're getting the full story of otan and i'm talking you're getting a godfather saga here it's going to be epic it's going to be put in print it'll be a thousand pages I've, I've just got through the first two three chapters so you can you can grab all of that if you um jump onto the website am i allowed to give the website out yeah yeah of course yeah so it's uh www.lacosaostra.com pretty easy jump on there you can find the medium link with the backstory for this the discord link jump in there it's quite small at the moment but we're family so you know we welcome people we try and help each other and uh jump in the discord twitter's on there some arts on there mint is still open find a period where there's low gas and yeah get involved get involved support the calls contest right so you put out a contest rather I did, yeah I did. there's three questions that that uh w- would win an ft so um uh did you did you pick the three questions i did pick the three questions i think we may have covered some of the detail of those questions so as i go through these three i might go we've done that already right so first one it's um otan king so i will message all of these people directly and let them know they've known and they've they've won and they're probably in this call anyway but yeah otan king his question was what inspired you to crossbreed ostriches with what i believe to be gta and give us this whole otan universe i think i covered that one already so uh congrats mate you won um benny the 12 what do you consider to be the most valuable utility a coin or nft can offer something that you look at as true value for holders i'd say peace of mind you know there's nothing greater in my portfolio than Quant. I could live with Quant in my portfolio and sleep easy every night knowing I'm never going to wake up and it's going to be worth nothing. I'm never going to wake up and the team are going to run away. So yeah, peace of mind. And that's what I want to do with OTAN as well. I'm not running nowhere. Eventually this mask will be off, but that's dependent on me getting rid of my real life company and not having to work with the clients I work with. And um, when we get to that point, people will have a bit more trust in me, but yeah, definitely peace of mind is the most important thing I think you can have from a coin that you're buying into. You've got to have faith in it. If you can't sleep because of it, it's not the one for you. Get rid of it. Um, right. So, Trypto13, what's the single largest positive impact that this space will have on the world? Flip it. What's the single largest negative impact this space will have on the world? So I think we covered the second half right when we were talking about the control that the blockchain gives to power that we have nothing to put up against in terms of pushing back on i think let's go with the single largest positive impact this space will have on the world i think it will make people generational money i think if you're smart in this space you're so early that you literally can set you your kids and your kids kids up forever if you are smart and you know when to sell and you know when to hold 
and you buy things that you know are going to be here in 50 years, then there's definitely generational money for your kids to be had here. So I think I could talk about the benefits for like the tech world or the banks, but they don't care about us. I don't care about them. But for the normal people, you know, generational wealth, definitely the most amazing opportunity. It won't pop like the way that the, the, um, the dot-com bubble pops. This is your chance. Get in, learn about it, make some money, set yourself free. So I think that's the three. Oh, yeah, and I've got one more. Well, I'm going to embarrass him now because it was quite embarrassing. So, uh, <laughs> Brandon, I'm going to find out exactly what your Twitter name is, but you managed to post your question at least five times in the wrong place across multiple different tweets, <laughs> and then I actually pointed you to it, and I think you still got it wrong, mate. So just for sheer persistence, I'm going to give you the bonus four for NFT. So enjoy. And next time, um, yeah. Enter early because I need at least two weeks for you to make sure that you've done the right thing to actually win something, mate. <laughs> so do you have anything uh, else you want to add that uh, we, we didn't cover? Um, no, I mean, just thank you for having me, you know. And if, if you want to give me a follow, I'm at Pape Stacker. So that's P-A-P-E-S-T-A-C-K-A on Twitter. And uh, yeah, most of my content, to be fair, is um, inebriated ramblings, but you do get the odd gem. So Unfortunately, you've got to put up with me if you're going to put your notifications on because you're going to get all of that 4 a.m. Um, Saturday morning going into one and uh, talking about all sorts of stuff with Pablo and Scrooge, which is always great fun. So, yeah, give me a follow. And um, no, just thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.